Hey there folks, welcome back to Mom's House. So today we are going to be talking about harvesting rainwater or uh, water recatchment systems. Uh, kind of continuing along our theme of household or homestead sustainability. Uh, that's a whole mouthful, right? So today, and I will link in the description, <clears throat> I'm following a particular model for rainwater catchment, if that's something uh, that you want to incorporate into your household. Um, I have collected some materials just to model what it is that we're looking at, and then I'll link the actual plans. Uh, again, I wanted to be sure that this was something that I didn't have to purchase materials for to keep in line with the idea of reusing trash uh, for instructional, educational, knowledge sharing purposes, um, just to simply demonstrate what it is that we're doing. Uh, if you have the money, time, resources to build the, the real thing instead of the model that I'm showing you, uh, again, like I said, I will go ahead and link that in the description. So for today, what I'm working with is a milk jug. Um, and then I found uh, some tubing in the garage. I'm actually not entirely sure what this is from. Uh, but it will serve its purpose to demonstrate kind of like a uh, spigot, I assume. Um, and then I'm going to cut out some cardboard from boxes to show essentially how it would be propped up as well. Um, and then I do have um, <clears throat> a weird uh, tool that I'm going to use for demonstration purposes. I found an old pair of pantyhose that I'm going to use as... Um, a screen. So anytime you are collecting water, it is also important to ensure that you are preventing, A, you don't want any debris or anything falling into your uh, water recapture system. Uh, you also don't want it to be <clears throat> a breeding ground for uh, pests like mosquitoes. You know, we kind of already addressed that in the bug trap video. So I'm going to go ahead and get cutting on the cardboard. Um, I just needed to cut enough to cover and hold, or to hold the width of the jug. So I'll be uh, off screen just making sure that I have that right. And then I'll just cut it in strips, bend, and tape. I have some packing tape in addition to the boxes to do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get cutting here. Seem to be disturbing my feline friend here. Um, and so a couple of things I wanted to talk about too while I was uh, constructing this model. You know, the, the theme of the channel is I like to be able to talk to you all while I work through projects in case anybody just needed to come by and have um, a safe and inclusive space to hang. So again, still talking about sustainability elements during projects, uh, and this is really important. We've talked about the pillars of sustainability. We've talked about more or less a Venn diagram model of sustainability, um, you know, where the different elements of people, profit, planet, or uh, economy, social, and environmental are standalone that contribute to a greater uh, something, <clears throat> but, you know, the whole of sustainability and, and whether or not, you know, you can determine a thing, high value, low value, etc. for sustainability purposes when evaluating projects, theory, systems. Um, today, though, we're going to do a little bit of talking about the concentric model of sustainability. So um, how does this particular project relate? to the sustainability themes that we've been talking about. Well, water is going to be a free and continuous resource, courtesy of the planet. Uh, so theoretically, rainwater catchment is not only friendly on water or potentially energy bills uh, for any of my friends running well water, um, but this is also something that could contribute to the homestead theme that we've had going. This could provide uh, <clears throat> water to your household in, say, times of crisis or apply to folks maybe in different communities uh, where public water isn't readily available. Uh, there are some communities where the groundwater, the availability of groundwater is affected um, by people not having water 
uh, readily available or flowing or what have you into their homes. And so rainwater catchment would be uh, a sustainable way to provide water to households that, you know, maybe don't have the uh, privilege of access to public water systems like that. So um, the availability to provide something such a basic and essential resource to your household, especially for free by using rainwater, um, would be a high value sustainability product. It would make your you know, homestead, if that's what you're shooting for, uh, more resilient to those negative shock impacts, things like drought or availability, if that's something that were to apply to you. If there were a water shortage, uh, it would require simple treatment, boiling, what have you, to filter or uh, treat your rainwater and prepare it for human consumption. Um, in the more, I guess, plane of thinking for first world problems, um, you know, maybe it's a good way to scale back on the amount of water that you use to water your lawn, water your garden, water your uh, plants. If you have any um, Maybe not crops on a big scale. Well, technically, you could if you had a quite large scale, uh, that is the thing about sustainability is that you do have to take into consideration things across scale. Um, but uh, it is something that you could incorporate uh, to maybe cut back on the more frivolous water usage, you know, simply rerouting from your gutters, for example, to a catchment system, or, you know, maybe you use PVC piping uh, directly uh, tapped into your gutters so that it distributes evenly around your gardens. You know, there are a lot of, of applications here. So as far as the environmental impact that we've been discussing and how the choices that we make in our homes, you know, that small scale individual and communities, also kind of a small-ish scale uh, of society, the choices that we make should respect the value that we have to protect the planet, you know, if that's your jam. Uh, there is only so much to go around. You know, we talk about everything has limits and, you know, these, these resources that we discuss are finite. Um, and so there's only so much to go around when it comes to those natural environment, those planetary resources, the large scale environment, the bigger picture. Uh, if you want, especially when it comes to water, or even when it comes to water, the most abundant resource on the planet. Um, individual acts of water harvesting could actually alleviate a burden on public water supply. Um, it's cost effective. These systems are inexpensive uh, to start, to maintain. Um, and I think, too, that it's a useful way, of course, to bring water to, like I said, uh, vegetation, gardens, lawns, crops. Um, and it's good for, for the planet and, and to help people alleviate the burden of public energy and water. Like I said, you know, in some communities that might be a thing or helping to protect the groundwater systems that are available. Um, I will link in a paper for communities a little bit different from my own. There is an inherent privilege there to um, dissect that I a, have access to healthy, clean uh, public water. And I know that we talked about the concentric model of sustainability, so I'll revisit that here in a moment. Um, I am going to take my board. As you can see, my milk jug fits on it quite nicely. And I am just going to bend so that it can be propped up, right? Let's see here, about, yeah, about the length of my hand. I could get um, a better or more accurate measuring tool if I preferred, but I'm already here talking to you guys and I don't wanna skip out on you unless I have to. And I did realize, I think that I left one of my materials uh, outside when I was looking for things uh, to use for this project. So I think I'm also going to attach to a bottom piece of cardboard <clears throat> so that this would essentially represent this bottom piece right here would essentially represent um, the ground. You do want to make sure that you have a level surface. There are some links in the resources that I'll be posting uh, in the description for you all to follow and ideas on how to level that out, especially if you're planning on putting your water catchment system if you want to do a full scale 
um, you know, not on a driveway, maybe it is on a driveway, maybe you're on a hill, you know, making sure that things are leveled out so that your water doesn't tip over, get imbalanced, so on and so forth. You don't want to set the whole thing up and then it just topples over on you. So, um, one of the other things that I need to do is I need to make this more representative of a bucket. Uh, the model I'm following is basically like a trash can um, type of model with a spigot. So I want to go ahead and cut off the top of this. Um, get my milk jug going. I really know if that's a great idea to cut it that way. Let me take this off. And we'll just pinch and cut like we did in our plastics video. Please be safe with sharps and any tools that you use. I feel like that's a non thing to remind anyone uh, following along or wanting to attempt projects for themselves. Safety first, please. And I'm going to cut all the way around, trying to keep it as level as possible to represent the trash can. Now, as you can see, basically just a bucket. So, let me get my tape here. And, uh oh, can't find where to start with. There it is. Tricky, tricky. All right. And so here I am just going to use my crop piece, make sure that's bent over, and I'll probably just get this started with a small slice of tape, put on the leg so we don't use the starting, lose the starting point again, and then get it semi-centered on its base, aka the ground for the purposes of this model or illustration. All right, I'm gonna lay this straight across my top piece like so, and then just kind of bend it back to attach. Oh, sorry folks. All right, cool, so we're attached. I'm probably gonna attach on the other side just to keep it sturdy. And I'll just cut off another quick slice like so, and then take the underside, if you will, just to kind of hold that in place. <clears throat> so now we have tape on both sides. Um, in some of the videos, this is a cinder block, a series of cinder blocks. Sorry, loud noise. I am repeating on the opposite side. Um, so in some of them, like I was saying, it's a cinder block, series of cinder blocks, or it is, in fact, just full wood construction. Uh, some of the models utilized a um, like pallet sort of construction. That would be something uh, that might be readily available to some folks uh, if you live near any major shopping center or something along those lines. They might have some pallets you can swipe just to keep it from being directly on the ground. Okay, I take the outside again. So again, just repeating on the second side here. And taped on the outside and inside of one side. So I'm gonna tape on the inside of my last side. I'm kind of just pinching to get that corner made. And then, there we go. Good. All right. So here's our base, a little flimsy. Maybe I should put something in the bottom or maybe another section of cardboard just to make sure it's good and sturdy. I do want to go ahead and demonstrate for you all um, as well how this would work with water flowing through. So I want to make sure that it's actually sturdy and not going to fall over on me. I'm just going to go ahead and rip it off 
the remainder of the box and then just trim the excess. Maybe we could roll it up to more represent the cinder block style. <clears throat> I feel like that would be uh, quite handy for representation. Oh good, I like that. Okay, maybe I'll go a little bit lower and sort of prop it up in that way. All right. see what this does. Perfect. So I just took another piece of cardboard to make sure that it wasn't going to shake like so and then I'll tape that off so that that's completely closed and sturdy. Another snippet. Let's do the top. Put that along my inner piece. Okay. And then we will get back to our chit chat on the concentric circles of sustainability. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to introduce a new topic and then get sidetracked. Just wanted to make sure that this was sturdy. There's no point in talking about it and then modeling the principle just to have it fall apart while I'm trying to show you guys. Okay, so I've got it up here and taped on the top and then I'm just gonna brace it on the bottom here so that things stay steady for us. Let's get another, uh-oh, I lost my start again. And, okay. And cut. Perfect. All right, so we're all taped off and we're pretty sturdy here. We're going to imagine that this is either lumber, oops, lumber or uh, some sort of cinder block set up to keep our water collection system off of the ground and let's do I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this as we're just gonna picture that this is the flat lid that perhaps comes with a trash can um, for the model purposes I just wanted to cut that below the handle so we didn't have any issues uh, with filtration and, and whatnot. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and cut a piece of this hosing to represent the spigot. So basically just like a little straw. And I will cut an equal sized hole. Actually, let me get a marker to make sure that that is good and I'll be right back and we'll revisit uh, the rest of the model construction and then our concentric circles of sustainability. I haven't forgotten. Hello and welcome back. Sorry, I had to step off for just a moment to make sure that we were doing uh, things correctly and I needed to get something to measure where I need to put my hole. Okay, and so I'm just gonna keep my sharps open, my fingers out of the way, and put a hole into my jug here that is supposed to represent our trash can. And the reason you'll want to put the spigot at the bottom is if you intend to harvest your rainwater uh, once you've captured it, like we discussed, uh, you will not want to be carrying around uh, these big containers. You know, for the purposes of a model, does it really matter if I have to walk around with a half gallon of water? No. Um, but for practical reasons, once we talk about expanding our scale, 
um, you know, let's say you want to use this to water um, a small crop setup that you have for your household, you're not going to want to carry around, for example, a 55-gallon bucket. Um, I don't even know how that would work, actually, especially if it was full of rainwater and heavy. So, the spigot would serve the purpose of being able to put in, from one container to the other. So, I essentially just poke this through to represent the spigot, right? Um, obviously, you're going to want to put it lower. I didn't want to buckle the bottom of my example, though, so it's towards the bottom, yes, but in an ideal world, it would actually be um, about exactly this far from the bottom of the container, um, just in case. So maybe you're not working with a whole lot of rainwater, but you still need to harvest. Now, <clears throat> these are just some throwaway uh, hoser, hoser that I found. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these to stretch over the top of my jug here. Um, and this will serve essentially to represent a kind of netting or screen setup that you would want to use on top of your rainwater catchment system so that you don't have uh, mosquitoes or other various uh, species uh, as well as any kind of trash or debris um, in your system. So let's see if we can do this without having it buckle. Um, I'm going to say my uh, actual, my <laughs> these garments are not uh, a gallon jug sized. I'm a very small person, so let's see if we can use this here as intended. I may need to cut from the second portion in order to get it to stretch a little more. Just trying to apply some tension to get it to stretch out a bit. Maybe it, oh gosh, maybe it would be beneficial to run it all the way to the bottom. I don't know. Let's find out. Let's play around with it and see what happens. Hmm, not really. Let's use perhaps a bigger cut from the top and see if that works a little bit better for us. Let's see. Okay, so I did want to revisit uh, as well kind of what we were, what I had started talking about earlier, uh, going along with a different uh, model for sustainability. Uh, and this time I want to talk about the concentric model of sustainability, because that's what really would apply here. Um, the idea that there are related and interconnected levels and subsystems uh, of the elements of sustainability, right? The natural environment, which holds everything else that is nested inside of that so that we are as a society and our economy as well, um, is nested within and reliant upon the constraints and resources provided by the natural environment. So here in this model of the concentric circles of sustainability, right? The natural environment holds everything. So it holds the whole of society, right, uh, which generates the economy. So in essence, when considering this project and um, taking into account the limitations or uses slash reuses in this case um, for the resources of the natural environment, such as rainwater, for the things that we're already doing, whether you're talking about water and gardens um, or personal consumption of water, we are able to essentially place less economic burden on public systems and we're free to participate in the economy in other perhaps more high value ways. Um, you know, for example, do you pay for water? Is water harvesting legal where you live? Uh, what if you could cut a chunk of your water bill and the water and energy burden um, each billing cycle, you know, where, where would you spend that? Is that something that you would be able to funnel into other areas, uh, and not be such a necessary evil for survival, right? Um, because nothing is free in life. Um, you know, where, where would you put your, your money? Would you be able to align it more with some of your values, 
Uh, would you be able to put it into other sustainability projects? Would you put it into maybe participating more in your local economy? I know sometimes uh, that can be expensive, which can be a constraint for some people um, to making those choices, right? Um, to buy local. And so actually, let me see if I can just run this across and then tape it off. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that looks, we can do that. It's not the prettiest, but it definitely demonstrates purpose. And we're making use of things we already have. So maybe you've got to convince somebody that this is a project that you want to undertake and you need to build a model. Well, there you have it. And then let me go ahead and cut off of the other side as well. Because um, I think we're going to end up with a little bit more of our screen, quote unquote, here than we need. So let me, I went from too little to now too much. Perfect. So again, this is going to be to mediate any sort of creepy crawlies, critters, what have you, uh, or debris from getting into your system. So I want to go ahead and tape that off. Now I know for the purposes of modeling, this is just because it is a model that we are building. Um, any sort of screen that you would put on your system, you would likely not have to secure down or you could secure down just by replacing your uh, trash can lid. But I don't want this to move when I put water on it um, in case anyone is more of a visual type of learner and would need to actually see it in practice to understand what it is that we're talking about and how it works. So I'm just securing this down on all four sides uh, with some packing tape. Okay, good. Like I said, not the cutest, but it'll do. So now we have our screen on the top, this representative of our spigot, and this would be more or less your trash can if you want for visual purposes, you know, replacing the lid um, back on the top, you would just have to have some sort of opening, right? Unscrew the top, you would just have to have some sort of opening for the rainwater to fall through. Uh, we will likely, for demonstration, I'm going to walk this over to um, the sink probably and show you all what this will look like. So here we are. Here's our ground. Here's our prop up, however you want to do that um, to make sure that it's off the ground. Maybe you want it inaccessible. Maybe you have children um, and you don't want the little humans to be able <laughs> to get a hold of it, pull it over on themselves. That would not be very safe. So obviously not recommended by mom at mom's house um, because safety first. And then you have your actual water catchment system with some sort of element installed, likely a spigot, something that you can close off. Um, let me do... Well, we'll leave it as is. Uh, likely something that you can close off because you don't want to just leave this open and running, right? I guess for the purposes of our example, because I will just be doing it very quickly um, with a little bit of water, I can roll up some excess cardboard. Um, and since this is supposed to be representative of a spigot, we'll just use this as kind of like something to close it off, essentially, um, so that the water doesn't first run out. I might have done this part too large in circum... Nope. Let me just kind of plug that up, right? Because you want it to actually hold the water again is the point. Um, and then, actually, here, let me just do this. And I brought water in here with me, and so I'll just use the top here to catch water. And mom's not a big fan of plastics remember so i just filled a mason jar with some water and then uh since i have the top on my milk jug here let me make that make sure it's secure uh that should catch 
any uh, runoff. So if it is raining, right, you want the rain to go into your system. Uh, the rainwater will still go through the screen. The idea is, you know, any debris or what have you. Let me get some debris, actually. Got some debris here. Uh, let me cut another piece off real quick so we can kind of show the purpose of the screen. And there we go. Got some debris in our water. Okay. And then it just goes into, so from the sky, right, we all hopefully remember the precipitation cycle from grade school. So uh, if it were raining, it would go into your system. Oh, let me pour carefully here. And as you can see, it caught, the screen caught my debris here. And then the uh, spigot, we keep it closed. I'm gonna go ahead and pour the remainder because remember, for demonstration purposes, I had to put it a little higher than you would wanna put in your actual system. And then we can unplug, take our temporary plug out of here, and then I'll likely have to pour it over a little bit to get it to where my straw is. And then you can see, whoop, where is it? And get the debris out first. And it's a little hard to see with the screen. I do not think I used enough water to be able to show you all coming out of the spout. There we go. So in an ideal world, you would just take the cap off your spout and then you could just take as much water as you needed. Let's say you just needed to water a couple plants in the front yard. Boom, you put them in another container and you can walk it right off. So that's our uh, piece on rainwater uh, recapture and harvesting for today. Very simple tools, uh, pantyhose, duct tape, scissors, uh, plastic, tubing that I just literally found in the garage. I don't know, maybe it's a giant straw of some sort. Um, a milk jug to represent a trash can. I will link the far prettier um, and more put together example in my description. Um, and the milk jug and cardboard. So I hope you guys had a good time. I hope we learned something different um, discussing our concentric circles of sustainability. I know that's a little bit different than what we typically uh, talk about. Still the same elements, but the principle that the environment holds and is, is essentially the limit for everything else, for people, for individuals, for societies, groups, communities, states, countries, continents, uh, all of us, humanity together, it holds all of us and our exchange, our economy, our currency, um, and, and we have to respect and understand those limitations. And there are ways to, um, you know, reuse the resources that are literally falling from the sky uh, to, again, keep an eye on what it is that we're taking out of our natural environment and considering what we're putting back into our space or the natural environment itself. So thanks again, guys, for coming to Mom's house. Um, as always, eat something from the earth. Get uh, plenty of water today. Drink some water if you haven't already. And also get plenty of sunshine. And if you can't find any sunshine, then maybe be the sunshine. Have a good day, folks. All right, folks, so I have a handy-dandy assistant. I'm going to be getting up on this ladder right here and pouring water, well, via the hose, into the garden where I plan on instituting some sort of rainwater recapture. You can see right here above my shoulder in the middle of where the ladder is planted, uh, the gutter where it comes out. I'll likely be instituting some sort of system to distribute through the garden out here. So I'm going to try to get the best shot I can and manufacture some water slash rainfall um, and hopefully you guys can see uh, the sun's a little kind of competing here. So I may just have them hold it so that you can see the water coming out of the bottom and how we will eventually redistribute. Cool. All right, folks, I got my water running. So we're pointed at the gutter down here so that you all can see. And so the rainwater will be going into the gutters from the house and you can see it kind of already pouring out. So the reason why we want to do the capture is to keep it from getting too concentrated in one area and get some better irrigation to our crops.